Well, good morning, let's pray together. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory forever, as your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation. Pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation, his deliverance he has openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord, may all the earth break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the voice of melody, with the trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sound praises before the Lord, the King. Let the sea thunder and all that fills it, the world and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness he will judge the people and the peoples with equity. Hallelujah. We rejoice and sing before the Lord. He's done great things for us. And we rejoice and sing before the Lord because he will do great things in the future. He will come to judge the world. And Psalm 99. The Lord is King. Let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim. Let the earth sh shake. The Lord is great in Zion and high above all peoples. Let them praise your name, which is great and awesome. The Lord our God is holy. Mighty King, who loves justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call on his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies, and the law he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You were a God who forgave them, and pardoned them for their offences. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Hallelujah, we join our praise with the praise of the psalmist. We exalt the Lord and we bow down before him. He is holy. And our third psalm is Psalm 100. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with the Son. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. The testimonies we heard from past generations are the confidence we have for the future. The Lord blessed our forefathers, he will bless our, ch our children too, should he tarry in his return. His faithfulness endures to this generation, the one we live in. We are not inferior to the past or the future, but for God's blessing is on this generation too. His steadfast love is everlasting. We thank God for the days in which we live, because they are days where his faithfulness is demonstrated and shown. Return to the story we're reading in Numbers, Numbers chapter 22, we're going to start at verse 36 and read through into the next chapter. When Balak heard the Balaam had come, he went out to meet him at Ermor, on the boundary formed by Aram. At the furthest point of the boundary, Balak said to Balaam, Did I not send to summon you? Why did you not come to me? 
Am I not able to honour you? And Balaam said to Balak, I have come to you now, but I do have power. But I but do I have power to to say just anything? The word the Lord the, the word God puts in my mouth, that is what I must say. And then Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kirith herself. Balak offered uh, sacrifices of oxen and sheep and sent them to Balaam and to the officials who were with him. The next day Balak took Balaam and brought him up to Bamoth Baal and from there he could see part of the people of Israel. Then Balaam said to Balak, build me seven altars here and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stay here your burnt, with your burnt offerings while I go aside. Perhaps the Lord will come and meet me. Whatever he shows me, I will tell you. And he went to a bare height. Then God met Balaam, and Balaam said to him, I have arranged the seven altars, and I have offered a bull and a ram on each altar. The Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and this is what you must say. So he returned to Balak, who was standing beside his burnt offering, and all the officials of Moab. Then Balaam uttered his oracle, saying, Balak has brought me from Aram, the king of Moab, from the eastern mountains. Come curse Jacob for me. Come denounce Israel. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce those whom the Lord has not denounced? From the top of the crags I see him, from the hills be, be, I behold him. Here is a people living alone, who, who can count who can count the dust of Jacob, or number the dust cloud of Israel. Let me die the death of the upright, and let my end be like his. But Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I brought you to curse my enemies. But now you have done nothing but bless them. He answered, I must not must I not take care to say what the Lord has put in my mouth. So here's this story of Balaam coming out, he'd been paid to curse the people of Israel, but how could he curse that which God had blessed? There may be people who utter curses against us, whether um, real curses that they, they believe will have some power over us or they may just be people just moaning about us and, and muttering about us. It doesn't really matter what people try to do for, to us because the Lord has pronounced us blessed. So who can curse us? There is no effective curse that can be brought against the people of God because the Lord has called us blessed. His word is more powerful than the words of the nations. And so we look in the, the New Testament and our reading this morning is following in Luke's Gospel, chapter 8 and verses 1 to 15. Soon afterwards he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing good, the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, and Susanna and many others, who provided for them out of their resources. When a great crowd gathered and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock, and it, as it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew it produced a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, Let anyone who has ears to hear, listen. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to others I speak in parables, so that looking they may not perceive, and listening, they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, the ones on the path are those who, are, who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so they may not believe and be saved. The ones on the rock 
are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no roots. They believe only for a while, and in the time of testing fall away. As for what fell among thorns, these are the ones who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. But as for that in the good soil, these are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast, in a honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patient endurance. Hallelujah. So here is that well-known parable, the parable of those who, of, of the seed falling into the ground. In fact, I want you to notice it's not really the parable of the seed because the seed is the same. The seed is good seed. It's the ground into which it falls. All of us receive good seed. We all receive the word of the Lord. We must make sure that the ground of our hearts are prepared to receive it so that we may grow up thereby. Let's pray together. Lord, we first give you thanks for the birth of Reuben and Lord, we pray for him. Lord, we pray that you will uh, bless him as he begins to grow. Lord, we thank you for the skills of doctors and nurses who will be able to treat his falling oxygen level. And Lord, we pray that now he will grow, go from strength to strength and grow up uh, strong uh, before you. And Lord, we lift up this day and the various tasks that we encounter. Lord, those who we will meet today, Lord, we pray that we will be able to share something of the gospel message, something of your kingdom with them. Lord, we pray for our church that, Lord, you will bless it and cause her to grow, um, to be secure in you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Be made one by the power of the Spirit. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.